This is the Harbor Freight Sentec brand 7-function multi-tester. It's item number 98025. It's your basic volt ohm meter with a couple of other functions on it. Uh, it's very inexpensive. I think it sells for about seven or eight bucks. A lot of times they have it on sale for three dollars. And if you watch their sales and get their flyers, oftentimes you can get it for free. That's right, absolutely free. So if you stock up on those coupons, what's really nice is you can get a bunch of these just to keep one in the in the car, one in the uh, tool chest, uh, one in the garage, you name it, and that way it'll always be there for you. But being that they're so inexpensive, they're not necessarily the most reliable out there, uh, and they're just certainly good enough for some quick tests and, and things like that, certainly not any very high quality stuff. But uh, there are some adjustments that you can make with it. So let's get this opened up and I'll show you how it all works. Now you should have basic understanding uh, working skills of the multimeter as such. So I'm not really going to go into how to use it. Uh, you should really know what you're going to be testing here. But just to give you an example, we can set this to like the 20 volt scale DC. Flip it on over there. It zeroes out. And you have your two probes here. And we'll test the uh, power supply I've been using for uh, a lot of the other stuff here and see what that reads. Okay, I have this hooked up now to the supply on the 12 volt rail. And it's reading 11.09 or so. Uh, there is no load on the supply, so this isn't really that valid of a test. But even so, it does show there's voltage there and it does climb a little bit here and there. But I also have another multimeter that's hooked up. As you can see, that's the Harbor Freight one right there with its probes. And here's another one I have. Not that I necessarily trust it anymore. Uh, this is a Velleman brand. This is a uh, DVM850BL. And you'll see there is a disparity here. 10.96, 11.15 or 16. So they vary, you know, by 0.1 or almost 0.2 right there. But you can adjust that. Now, this isn't really the best test here. You should have a good known supply uh, of a definite working voltage, such as a uh, 1.5 volt uh, alkaline cell, which should read about 1.6 or so, and you could adjust based on that. Or if you have a really good multimeter, such as a Fluke, uh, you can measure with that and then compare it to this and then adjust it, and I'll show you how, how to do that right now. Okay, so here's the back of it. And there's two screws that you have to take out over here. They're just two little Phillips screws. This is also how you change the battery in this unit. And I've also read that the Ronings, uh, the Ronings, the readings on it become erroneous uh, should the battery voltage of the uh, internal battery become low. So once you take the screws out, you just kind of pry it apart. And there you are. You're left with a uh, El Cheapo China 9 volt battery made by Jingdi. Okay, for whatever that's worth. <laughs> uh, there is a fuse which is replaceable. But what you're looking for here is this potentiometer. And what we're going to do is leave this open and hook it up, and then we'll turn it so it matches the other one. Not that it's necessarily correct, but at least to give you an idea of how it works. Okay, right now that's reading 11.17. The other meter is reading 11.03. And what you do is you adjust this potentiometer ever so slightly in one direction or the other. It takes a very small amount of movement. And right there, that's about close enough. I have a bad lead on this one. So that's uh, about as close as you're going to come unless you want to really spend a lot more time putting it together, uh, playing with that little potentiometer. So you can adjust this, uh, and it may require periodic adjusting uh, depending on the level of the battery that's in it. So let's actually go and meter that. Never ever 
meter the internal battery of a meter using that meter. Use a different meter to meter that battery. You can put a different battery in this one and measure its battery with this meter, but do not ever measure the battery in this unit because you will not get anywhere close to a proper reading and you may damage it. So let's take a look and see what that actually reads with the other meter here. I'll turn it off and disconnect the leads over here. Just like that. And I'll just call the reading out to you. 9.76. So, this battery should be good. As much as that meter may be off, that battery is pretty well spot on. So a very simple device, very inexpensive, but for the price of oftentimes free, you simply can't beat it. If this video helped you out, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.